Good morning. My name's Jeff Johnson from Kudos Solutions. I'm here to talk about sort of planning and scheduling in FMCG. So I'm going to briefly sort of go through a quick overview of sort of what we're seeing as sort of typical challenges in the industry, um, a little bit about, about our experience, and again, ha how we're solving that problem. And again, I've got some notes on this machine, which is hence the reason I've got both here. Okay, so Kudos Solutions, we've been around since 1990. Um, it's probably a clue there as to what we do. Um, we sell and implement Creator uh, seeded software and have been doing since uh, 1994. So we've, we've, we've got a long established implementation process, um, sorry, implementation process, uh, process with, with Creator. And again, we've been running through they, we, as we can see, and again, have always lived in this, in this vertical of food and drink. So what are we seeing? The typical challenges that we're seeing in this sector for, from a planning and scheduling point of view. The, 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 one of the main things we're seeing a lot of the time is, it, is this constantly changing demand. There's people in this room who will probably know far better than I do the, the, the short shelf life between actually the order and actually making the product is, is massively reduced compared to other industries. And I think this is the big thing that separates this industry from others. So we're typically here looking at changing demand on the day for the day. So we're, we're making to a forecast volume and we're then getting our orders right there and we're replacing those numbers. So we're making a short amount of stock that typically covers half a day, maybe a day and a half, or something like that, but, it, but it's not a huge amount of stock. But again, that leads us straight into the next sort of challenge we've got there, is we've got a short shelf life on the product. So typically, again, as everybody in this room probably knows far better than I do, that your, the, the shelf life on the product doesn't allow you to hold as much stock as to make it as you, as you would like to make in a single room. And again, added to that, you typically have a short shelf life on the intermediate processes as well. So that could well be, as we say there, in, in hours. So you've typically got maybe a shelf life that's a few days or you only get a few days worth of the finished product life before you have to give it over to the customer. But within the ingredients you're putting into that can be within hours. So we're, we, we're coming up against these problems time and time again. We've then got our interoperational dependencies again, which are based on life. So we can't cook something and pack it out five hours later, it has to be this link between the two processes. We're typically coming up and finding people are, are planning these things on spreadsheets, which, which again leads to the other areas because the spreadsheet is, isn't a finite tool. It's, we're looking at a sort of bucket-based value in a single cell, and we're looking at capacity that you're, you're not able to really do true scheduling in that spreadsheet. You're able to come up with a number value that you can work with, and then that very, very quickly falls into this tribal knowledge. So the volume then beyond that point is then saying, well, this is roughly what we would like to make. I'm going to give it to this person, and they, they tell me what, what order we make it and how we make it. So that then means that we're very reliant on individual people. So there's not a process in place really to be able to create a schedule. So the planning and scheduling side of things is very reliant on people and then tribal knowledge as well. So there's no single person who can then come in and say, well, I just press these buttons and I can go home. That's not typically what happens. And again, the problem is that then that happens, the same thing happens every day. So they face the same sort of challenges, the same sort of problems, maybe a slightly different order change, it might be different volume changes, but it's the same thing every day. And obviously, this is a very, very time consuming process for both the, the planners themselves, the production staff who are typically waiting on those plans. And again, because of the order cycle, the times that orders come in on, it means that we fall into those processes where we're not quite sure how long things are going to take and they're being pushed and pushed and pushed. So typically people are building slack into the system to be able to cope with this. So there's no real long-term visibility of capacity because there's always slack built into the whole process. And again, 
100%. From a time consuming point of view, to be able to change today's plan then almost becomes a complete nightmare because the iteration process that you have to go through means you've missed the answer you were looking for. So again, we're falling back on tribal knowledge, which again means that people, it's very reliant on individuals within a business to solve all these problems. So, what is our answer? I quite like that picture there. It's a sort of an out of the box solution, but I wouldn't say that typifies what we do. But people want an out of the box solution. That's what their expectation is. But in our experience over the years, what, what we find is that even though that there are systems that you can install and fill in boxes, no, nobody makes the same things. So why would an out of the box solution cope with every piece of equipment that you've got that may be different from a company down the road? You maybe make a different product that has different life. How would an out of the box solution cope with all of those things? So within Preactor, what we're able to do is we're able to configure that product. We're able to move the product through so that we're able to build and develop the system around. So almost like a piece of dough that we put into a tin and we push it out into the corners rather than give you a tin and say you have to fit into that tin. We're almost trying to mould the system to fit your environment. But another side of things as well is when we look at the answer, we, we, we see planning and scheduling as two very different things. Yes, they, they are linked and they're all part of the same process, but they are different things because they're designed to do a different task. So planning is telling me what I need to make. So what is my replenishment? And again, how much I need to make to replenish to a particular stock point? How much stock do I want to carry? Do I want to measure that in number of days worth of cover or I, I want 70% of tomorrow's volume as my target? 20%. Scheduling is how I best execute that plan. And again, in our experience, people are typically not scheduling a works order because you get a sale in and you're making part of that volume is for today and part of it is for stock build for tomorrow. So it's not against an individual sales order, it's a stock build with a percentage value on there as well. Planning also tells us what materials are required. So we're starting to look at that longer term view as to what volumes we, we need going forward. So maybe a material, so a rec gross requirements plan against, against that planning side and what capacity, so a visual of our capacity, so a rough cut capacity result on our planning volume. So we get a feel for yes, we should be able to achieve that plan going forward. And medium term plan, typically FMCG, could be 35 days, could be 28 days. In other industries, medium term plan could be six, seven months, but that's not the reality of what we see. We've seen a medium term plan as sort of typically four to five weeks, maybe a long-term plan, yeah, maybe a quarter, maybe 53 weeks. But again, scheduling can typically be today and tomorrow. And we're looking to get that iteration to work together. So our planning is feeding our scheduling. So when our order volumes do change day to day, we're not constantly going back and hitting the schedule. We're trying to leave the schedule in a, in a structured state, which means that when our order volumes do change, we're looking at them from a planning perspective to see whether they impact on our closing stock position. See, have we got any issues? Have we now got any at-risk stock? So we're trying to highlight these factors as we're going through and typically trying to make sure that we get a vision on that so that we can leave the day-to-day -day schedule alone as we're going through. So what's the main thing that we want these modules to do? We want to keep the, the process under control, but we still want to maintain these customer service levels. So we're looking to give you a tool that enables you to plan and schedule without having to constantly go back and change the schedule you've got issued to the shop floor. So you're not doing version two, version three, version four on the same iteration of the plan. And what are we using for this again? We're using Preactor here, and again, 
it's a graphical tool. It's an interactive graphical tool. So it's, it's user-friendly, we've got finite scheduling, we've got sort of planning, and we're working with the two. So it gives the planner that visual of what their numbers are, what that means from a capacity point of view, from a stock position point of view as well. From a scheduling, we can look at the labour constraints as well as a secondary constraint, because when we're in planning, we're looking at bucket-based planning, whereas when we're scheduling, we're doing finite capacity scheduling. So we're looking at additional constraints as well, such as tooling, labour, oven capacity, storage capacity of chillers, etc. So we know we can't start certain processes until other ones have been completed. From, from a QDOS point of view, what we're really trying to do is, is understand what your problem is. So if we go back to the sort of the, the lump of dough theory, we're trying to understand what best fits your business. So what are the problems that you're facing from a scheduling and a planning point of view? And basically what, what we're basically trying to do in that process, we, we just want to listen because we know that you, you're solving these things already day to day. Because again, otherwise, you wouldn't be running your business. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand the problems that you're facing and help you configure Preactor to suit that environment. And be because we have this toolkit within Preactor where we're able to configure the system and adapt the system and make changes to, to, the, to the logic that creates these schedules, as your business grows and the demands on it, so maybe commissioning new machinery, uh, you know, adding in new products, promotional products, the system can grow with you. So again, we have sort of uh, customers over the, who we've had for nearly 20 years from a planning and scheduling, and they've grown as they've grown as a business, they've grown with, Preactor has grown with them. And again, this is all about understanding what the requirements are from a schedule. So is it a complex process or is it a straightforward, is it a straightforward, simple process? But again, from a <coughs> results point of view, people want to know that this is going to pay off. Now, there are hundreds of case studies on the Preactor website that talk about ROI. And some people's ROI has been realised in weeks, not necessarily months. And again, John Gaynor and um, Siemens was talking about this earlier, is that there's the hidden ROI values that come with scheduling. So whether it's material availability, at-risk stock, just the time management, or even just the processing side of things, of being able to implement a process to handle the planning and scheduling, rather than it being a single individual who maybe takes X amount of hours, not because they can't do their job, but because it's a very complex job to have to solve day in, day out. And that's what these guys are doing. And again, perhaps to side things, it, it's a recognized product that has been implemented sort of globally. Again, these aren't all in FMCG. I'm not trying to stand here and say they are. But again, it, it's a global install product. So again, it's recognized all over the world and has many, many different iterations of how it's been implemented, which is how the product has grown, which is why it doesn't, from a development point of view, it isn't an out-of-the-box solution. Okay, luckily, I've run out of time for everybody. So thank you very much. Listen.